It's not afternoon. Could be. Could be afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the Director of Research and Development at Intelligent Concrete, where we specialize in making concrete do the impossible. And I'm David. We're here to... <laughs> Come on, you got a better title than that. All right, I'm Dr. David Harris. PhD, PE, fellow ASCE, fellow SCI. He's got 13 letters after his name. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I'm ready for Wheel of Fortune. You know? what, what? <laughs> I'd like an F. I'd like an F. Oh, there's two Fs, so... <laughs> so we're here to talk to you today about a handheld penetrometer. No, we're no, not. I really <laughs> want to talk about it, though. about another time. <laughs> we're here to talk to you today about using colloidal silica in the back of a ready-mix truck. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, you take the coil silica, you put it, in, pour it into the back of the truck, you mix it up, does all its wonderful things, and there you have it. <laughs> yes and no. By the way, David is chairing, co-chairing, one of the big dogs in charge of the colloidal silica admixture draft for ASTM. Yeah, we're staffing it out for ASTM. I'm, I'm serving as a as the principal staff person for that. So colloidal silica has become so popular within the last decade that users and manufacturers alike, even architects and engineers, have come together to help us create a or an ASTM for colloidal silica. Now, I mean, gosh, it's only taken us about, what, two months to put it together? <laughs> if only. If only. Uh, even ASTM these days is saying it takes two to five years. Dude, okay. So I... ASTM flew me out for this young professional shtick, and they said to me, oh, we're trying to push out ASTMs in 18 months, because I had made the statement that if I start an ASTM now, my great-grandchildren won't see it published. I'm like, no, 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 we're changing our ways. It's been, what, two years, three years? Two been years. Long? So, hey. We're entering the window, but, two to five. <laughs> but the important thing is, once these ASTMs, once these drafts are put into, you know, published, I mean, they become concrete law, and we want. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say concrete law. That was my best Sylvester Stallone accent. Um, maybe I shouldn't say law, but they become specification for people to use, so that they know what they're getting or what they're paying for is actually what is delivered. Absolutely, and that's what we're writing. We're writing a material specification that. As you and I talk about, it's the back of the soup can. You can turn it over and you can see what's in the bucket. You can see what's what's in the tote. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And but it has to meet certain criteria. And we're not talking about handheld pen. <laughs> no, we're not talking about it. I just <laughs> love this thing. Give me that. <laughs> All right, hey. go on. <laughs> so using colloidal silica is similar to using um, high-range water reducers. And when I say that, I'm talking about the raw colloidal silica where it's just water and nano silica particles in a universal dispersion. There are a lot of manufacturers out there right now who are creating friendlier admixtures that use colloidal silica. So it's a blend of other stuff with colloidal silica. So what I'm going to talk about right now is specifically colloidal silica or nano silica in a water and a little bit of salt dispersion. Cool? Okay. So my mix considerations, I have I think five rules. It might be six, it might be four. Let's just go through the list. Number one, I prefer to use a water cementitious ratio above 0.35. Now the reason why I say that is normally with mixes below 0.35, it's either really high strength or high early strength. And normally a raw colloidal silica will increase the efficiency of everything around it, meaning you'll get higher early strengths and you could lose your slump early on. Right. Point, point 0.35, I mean, it's, it's, it's stiff to start with. It well, unless you use a lot of high range. And I guess that's the one rule I'm okay with, breaking if and only if you're using a high range or an excessive amount of a high range water reducer. The second thing plays on the first where you got to use a high range water reducer. If you're using your mid ranges, your, your, your naphthalenes, your lignans, they normally operate off of a change of the electronegative potential of the cement pour solution or the cement paste. Did you know that? I do now. The cement particles <laughs> agglomerate together, traps the water, so we put in these mid ranges that change up the pH or that electronegative potential that causes deflocculation. Well, those same chemicals have a tendency of changing up 
the electrical double layer around the colloidosilica, the uh, force field. Right. So instead of them bouncing off of each other, sorry, I didn't mean to push you, bouncing up, sorry, I didn't mean to push you, <laughs> they end up sticking into each other, right. and the colloidosilica or the nanosilica agglomerates, and it's no longer a universal suspension. The third thing is mixing it at the tail end. Right. So high range water reducers, when they first came out, we did a video on this too, people used to close their eyes, throw it into the back of the truck and be like, eh, why isn't it working sometimes? Well, when you throw the high range water reducer to dry powder, it has a tendency of agglomerating. Right. Don't get the full efficiency out of it. So you want to put the high range when all the concrete is wetted. Same thing with clodosilica. You want a wetted surface when you're using the clodosilica. Right. We're not making baseballs here. Not making baseballs. So that was number three, right? I think so, yeah. Number four. <laughs> so I think it's only going to be four. Number four is if you're using a low alkali cement or a high supplementary cementitious mix, um, you want to use a coated clodosilica. Wow. The normal or untreated nanosilica particles, they don't really like those lower alkali packages and they have a tendency of, because you have a different pH or chemistry of that solution, that force field again, that electrical double layer, tends to break apart and instead of bouncing off of each other, they bounce and they end up sticking together. Through Bounty, Brownie emotion and Van der Waal forces, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I thought of that. <laughs> right? um, and then the, the fifth thing is is more of a, a common sense thing. There's a lot of different colloidosilica packages out there. You can get very narrow distributions and you can get very wide distributions. You can get different shapes and different coatings. If you're using a very small particle, a lot of people think the smaller the better because you have more reactive surface area. Right. The problem is with a much smaller particle, you have a very reactive surface area. And a lot of it. And a lot of it, which can cause tightening, right. which can cause agglomeration. Bad things have, start to happen. So the common sense thing goes in if you're using a higher dosage of a smaller particle, even a larger particle, and you start seeing your mix tightening up and getting dusty or you know, breaking up, getting clumpy, that's too high of a dosage. And you might want to throw more of a high range in there or just throw out your concrete and start over with a much lower dosage. To give you an example, uh, we used a three to five nanometer distribution uh, for a bare base colloidal silica particle. And we used a three to five nanometer distribution um, and we only used a half ounce per hundredweight. And that's like using an air. I mean, people, when we were holding this pint glass for the entire truck, people didn't believe us that it was going to have a great impact on the concrete. And as we know, six years later, it's still standing long and strong. Right. Um, that being said, you, in that little pint glass, you have trillions upon trillions upon trillions of particles that are enhancing the concrete. Football fields after football fields. A flipping man. So, Thank you very much for your time and joining us today to talk about how to use colloidal silica in the back of a ready mix truck. I'm John. Oh, wait, what? Put the right mix, put the right colloidal in the right mix to get the right results. We actually have written a lot of papers on them. They read like Mark Twain. More like Moby Dick, call me Ishmael. <laughs> so we'll include some of those links down below. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us today when we're talking about a new and amazing technology to help save the world with all the concrete in it. My name is John. I'm David. Go concrete, beat asphalt.